being here today to do a brand new Keens unboxing for all of you. You guys, it has been, it has been almost six years since we got a new Keens. Our last one, our 7S that we love, arrived in September of 2017. That's when that video went up. If you're interested in watching that video of the brand new 7S when it first came out, I was one of the first to have it here in California. It treated us great, but if you want to watch that video, go ahead and check the iCards above or the description box below. But at the time of that video, my girls were barely two and barely three. They had just had birthdays. They are now seven and eight. So that wagon doesn't have a foot well. This one does. Also, that wagon holds two children. This one holds four. And at the time of the video, my sister didn't have babies. And she now has a five-year-old and a three-year-old. So when we go out together, it'll be nice to have one wagon that will hold all four children. And when they're not with us, my girls will just have extra space, which I'm very excited about. But we're going to do a few things in this video. We're going to unbox this Keens. I'm so excited. I've never seen one in real life. We're going to assemble it. We're going to go ahead and put it in my car. And then tomorrow, you guys, we're going out on a family day to a place near us here in Southern California. We're going to push it around. I'm going to put the girls in it. Remember, they're seven and eight. They're the top of the growth charts. They're super, super tall. I'm going to show you guys a realistic look of what it looks like to put tall, older children in a wagon. And people may say, why do you want a wagon if your girls are seven and eight? Can they walk? They can, but we go places all day long. We'll go 12, 13 hours. And sometimes there's not a place for the girls to sit and have a snack, a clean place for them to rest when they get tired. So we went to Legoland about six weeks ago. It was hot, you guys, it was very hot. And there was nowhere to sit. And the girls wanted to have a snack and we couldn't find a table. We wandered and wandered and wandered. We couldn't find a table, we couldn't find shade. And the girls ended up having like a makeshift picnic on the ground, you know, stuff that we could put down. I always have a little blanket with us. And it, just, it wasn't super sanitary, it wasn't comfortable for them. And this allows us to have the girls to have a place to sit, to eat, to relax, to have shade when it's hot. Um, do they need to be in it all the time? No, they're seven and eight, but it's nice to have it for when they do, for when we're going to be gone 12, 13 hours, and it's just too much sometimes. So I'm excited. I'm so excited. And you guys, a, a little tangent here. My channel name is Perpetual Mommy. Now, some of you know why, but for those of you who don't, I will explain to you why I love Kings and why I feel like I'm a pretty good authority on this kind of thing. My oldest child turns 29 in a month and a half she's almost 30 so i've been a mama almost 30 years you guys my youngest are seven and eight so i had a baby every decade until my last two which are back to back so i've been a mama for a whole lot longer than i have i've seen the evolution of car seats strollers wagons uh cribs feeding utensils all of the things i've watched it all change for almost 30 years and man had there been some changes but there are some products that i just think are going to forever for me be things that i recommend to new parents and keens is one of them like I said, my girls are seven and eight and we just got a brand new one. And that first one, that seven S you guys, we have used religiously for almost six years. Now we were gonna go ahead and do this whole video outside, but because we're gonna assemble it, because we're going to talk about it, because we're gonna test things out, and it's hot here, you guys, and there's a lot of ambient sound, we decided to go ahead and do it inside the house. Now it is Saturday, my children are home. You may see people walking past. Our house has not been picked up, it's lived in. Welcome to my life. But let's go ahead and head on inside and open up this brand new Keens 7S Plus. Okay, so we're back inside the house. We're gonna go ahead and open up this beautiful Keens. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Hopefully I'll be able to get this out of the box by myself without my husband helping me. Um, I am short, you guys, I'm only five foot three, so I'm not a tall person. This box is more than half my height. Um, and at the end of this video, I'll go ahead and I'll be putting this into my van too to see how it fits. So we're gonna do all the real life testing stuff for you guys. And I'll tell you, I did watch a video before I got this um, wagon. I didn't wanna to watch too many videos because I didn't wanna be influenced by what other people had done. But in that video, uh, nobody put any drinks in any of the holders. So I'm gonna do a bunch of like real life stuff so you guys can see what fits, what doesn't fit, the practicality of things because that's what I'm interested in. And that's why in my videos, most of my videos, you guys, you don't see my face because my face isn't what's important when I do product reviews. It's what's being reviewed. So that's what we're going to focus on. And I'm just going to start throwing trash, you guys. Here's our manual. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up me opening up all of the items because you don't need to watch me like in real time, like take the packaging off the wheels, but I will do it on camera.
Okay, you guys, so I wanna let you know, I am gonna assemble this. I don't know if I'm gonna to refer to the instruction manual or not. It's not because I don't think I need it, it's because I read the instruction manual online earlier today, and I have a pretty good memory. So I'm hoping that I will be able to assemble that looks pretty easy, but if not, we have our manual here that we can go ahead and reference. Well, I just told you I've read the instruction manual. I didn't read how to remove the cover, so I'm going to kind of look around here and see if I can figure out how to get the cover off really quick and show you guys. So right down here, you guys, there's a buckle. There's one on this side too. This one's not fastened, but you just release, you just release the straps and then it'll slide off. Okay, so normally when you do that, it won't be so awkward, you guys. What was happening for me is things like this were falling out of the cover. So this was like inside the, co inside the cover against the wagon as I was opening it. So normally when you're using that cover, you won't have items trying to fall out at you as you take it off. Now I'm going to maneuver the wagon so that you guys can see me assembling it with the locking for the frame down facing you, that's where that red button is. So right here on top, you do have this clasp. Now this is how you fold up the with the wagon. This is what helps keep it secured when it's folded up. We're gonna go ahead and undo it and we're gonna open it up because all of our goodies are in here. So let's flip these bags out, let's see here. All right, so the one thing that I just pulled out but I think was out of frame is this little bag here. This little bag came out. And we have our, right here, this is our cup and cell phone holder. All these things come with the wagon. Our fourth wheel. So Keen's does a really good job of making sure everything's packaged really, really well. So things have shifted slightly in the video and it's because my husband noticed a spider running from this box towards my feet and we have lost it. So if there's screaming that happens all of a sudden, it's because I have found that spider on me somewhere. So anyways, check your boxes. Our box actually came with a significant hole in the side of it. And I guess there was a creepy crawly living in that box and it came out. So yeah, I'm not thrilled about that, but we're going to go ahead and move on. But I'll go ahead and insert it for everybody who wants to see it. That little clip right here. Oh, to the move. There's a spider right there. Don't move. I can't see it. On me? No, it's underneath the wagon somewhere. Is it big? No. Okay, so here we go. So this is where we left off. Right here, this is our canopy bag. So this bag has the canopy that comes with the wagon. And then this is our snack tray. Love that it comes with a snack tray. Okay. And then our axles over here, it might be attached. It is. So the axle has to be cut free from the wagon. Okay. Registration card, you guys, I'm big on safety. I'm a child passenger safety instructor and injury prevention specialist on the side. And I tell people, I don't care if you register silly things, but when it comes to safety products, please, please, please always send in your registration cards. And for those of you who don't know, these are protected by a law. It means that they cannot sell your information. The only thing they can do with this is notify you if there's a recall or a defect. It is, again, protected by law. So go ahead and send these in, no fear. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this. This is just a covering over the handle. And then we're gonna turn our wagon over. And I actually want this side so that you guys can see it with the little red. Again, that's the lock for the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on that side. So when I turn it over, I want to put the wheels on it. If your wagon comes for some reason, the handles are up, you need to make sure that they're all the way in the down position before you rotate it over. All right, now, so this is a cleaner look when I put on the wheels. I'm going to go ahead and try to lock the frame so that it's nice and open when we put the wheels on and I turn it over. So if you come over here, you can see the release lock for the frame right here. But in here, I'm going to go ahead and put my hand in here. And I believe now this is a practice. We're going to go ahead and push here. And there it went. It popped out right here. So that's locked now, so now we can go ahead and flip it over. Okay. 
Now, before I put the wheels on you guys, I just noticed that our five point restraints. So now this wagon has four five point restraints, two on each side because it does hold four children. Now the children do have to be at least a year old to ride in the wagon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that these are secured. So it's a little just ring that you just stick up through the slot. It's very easy to do. Just like this. Okay, we took a brief, another brief intermission, you guys, to open up the instruction manual. So remember I told you guys I read the manual online before I got the wagon open because I wanted to know what I was doing before I started. And in that, in that manual that I read online, it said that there's a safety strap that you have to hook together here when the wagon's open as a second set of security. And when I opened this though, this is what I saw with no extra strap. So I opened up the manual and this one does not have that. Now, for those of you who own the 7S, the original 7S, that one does also have a safety strap down at the bottom, but it doesn't have that locking mechanism that we just did to lock the frame in place. So I guess you don't need it anymore. They decide you don't need it anymore since you have this now. Back to the important part. Let's go ahead and put the wheels on the wagon. This is a front wheel. And the wagon does come with heavy duty off-road wheels. So there is over there in the corner, I'll let my husband go ahead and pan over there. That's our original Keens S. That's the one that we've had for almost six years. That one we had to upgrade to the off-road tires, the all-terrain tires. So we paid extra for those to switch out the tires on that. And we love them. So what is awesome about the 7S Plus is that it comes with the all-terrain wheels. You don't have to buy them separately. So that's amazing. So to put the wheel on, it's super easy. You're just gonna push the button in right here. Put the wheel on, locked in place. Make sure if it hasn't fallen off already, you removed your little gobbly gook right there. Same thing, you're gonna push the button in, snap the wheel on, locked in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up our axle. Same thing, see one of them fell off already. I'm gonna take our little gobbledygook again. That's the technical term for it, I'm sure. Off. So this is your axle, this is what it looks like. Now when you go to put it on the wagon, you wanna make sure that these toggle pieces, these pieces that push out right here, are facing outwards or towards your body. So it's gonna be facing like this. Lift up and pull down, push down. Lift out, push down. I'm gonna test it, locked into place. This is a rear wheel. Again, that beautiful all-terrain wheel. It does have a button right here. So you're gonna depress the button as you put it on. Depress the button. Slide your wheel into place. Let go of the button. Beautiful. The wheels cannot get any easier. For those of you who have assembled strollers before, sometimes you know this part can be a nightmare. Again, we're gonna depress the button. Slide it on, clicks into place. Love it. Flipping our wagon back over. Okay, so now you guys, I want you to see here. If you come on over here, you have these three points. Now these are the anchor points for your snack tray. So they just push through the fabric. So you wanna make sure that you push them through. Just like so. Okay. I'll do the same thing on this side. Just like so. Okay, now if all you wanted to do was stroll your wagon, you could be done. You could be done with your assembly at this point. But we don't wanna just do that. So let's go ahead and keep going. So let's go ahead and take a look at your five point restraints. Really nice and padded. So they have leg pads, a crotch pad, and shoulder pads on both sides. Same thing here. 
kind of twist it up in here. But again, you got your shoulder pads, your crotch pad, and your hip pads. So you got four of them. They are adjustable. I'm not going to go ahead and adjust those because my girls are seven and eight. I will not be using that feature, but they are adjustable. Now, here's the footwell. Let's go ahead and take a look at the footwell. So if you come on in here, you can see this part. So the footwell, if you don't want to use it, zippers on. So you zipper it just like this. To take it off, you just unvelcro it and take it out. We will be using this solely for the kids. I mean, I'm gonna keep this in case we ever do wanna lug something. And remember, this wagon will pull 300 pounds. So if you had to lug something 300 pounds, you could stick that back on there and go ahead and use it. But I'm gonna take it out because we're gonna use this for our girls to sit. But this is my first look, you guys, at the footwell. And it looks really nice. And there's a zipper down here too, you guys, if you can see this. There's a zipper right here too. This would be great to be able to brush out crumbs or anything else you got going on. I'll let you get a better look at it from this side. So that's a great little feature that's down there. And the other thing I wanted to check is Velcro. Have you ever received a product where the Velcro is backwards? So you know how you have the scratchy portion, the Velcro, and the soft portion? And sometimes what's left behind is the scratchy part. They did it right. So the scratchy part is here on the removable piece so that when you put the children in, the soft portion of the Velcro, the soft side is left inside. So that's really nice. And you guys, I love these big pockets. My kiddos are going to be so thrilled with these internal storage pockets. They are all about hoarding and hiding and keeping little treasures with them. Anything we find, shells, rocks, anything like that. So that's really, really great. I won't have to be putting them in my purse. So why I have you right here, since we're talking about the inside of the wagon, let's go ahead and try to put the snack tray on. So go ahead and I'll start on this side here. And remember, I've never done any of this stuff before, you guys. So you're seeing it all in real time, first time, real life. miss some on this side did I nope that's anchored on there that was very very easy you guys that was very easy and they have four little cup straps right here now I'm gonna go really quick and grab my girls cups so you can see the two most common ones that we take and how they look on there okay so these are the two cups of choice that we normally take out with us this is a thermo flask I believe this is a 16 or 18 ounce and this is a Stanley. This is a 24 ounce. So both of those, let me wiggle it around a little bit. Okay, so this one, if it gets really, really wobbly, may not be as secure, but that one in there, that's not going anywhere. Like I said, I think this is a 16 ounce. But these are both very wide and they fit in there great. handle and the cooler bag right now so let's go ahead and get this off of here this is where our um, registration card was so here you have a handle you have one on both sides and I'm still getting used to this because this one feels a little bit wider to me so I'm used to our regular 7s so when I'm going to do this it feels a little bit wider but it's not double as wide it's just a slightly larger so you do have a depression button on either side you do have to go ahead and push it in to lift it I'm just checking how many positions are this is the original one had eight positions, so let's go ahead and test it. So look, this goes all the way up, you guys. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there are eight positions, just like on the regular 7S. But let's go ahead and get it out of the way. So it does go all the way up. Here is your cooler bag. And I am so excited about this cooler bag because we take snacks with us. I don't believe in eating the junky food that's at all the amusement places when you go out. Plus my girls don't really like most of it. Okay, so this cooler is nice and wide. It's not super deep, but it is nice and wide. We put a lot of snacks in here, so that's great. And remember when you, let's see, how many zipper pulls does it have? Got a zipper pull. 
this side. So you do have two zipper pulls, one on each side. Okay, complete moment of transparency. These are not the easiest zippers in the world to use, but I'll take it because I love this cooler bag. All right, so this strap right here, this is for your cooler bag. Remember when you go to put your wagon up, when you go to fold it, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and you strap this baby down. And obviously make sure it's empty before you do that. Now on either side of the wagon, you also have one of these great little pouches. I, I can't even tell you. I mean, this is gonna be great for my husband and I to stick all kinds of things in while we're out. So you have one on each side. So the kids have a pocket on each side. So there's four total. And then you have two of these and they look exactly the same on both sides. These are great. I just found this on the floor, so apparently it came with this. This must have been on the axle when I took cut the axle off. So let's go ahead and take a look here together. I haven't had a look at these bags yet. We have one Velcro bag, and it is one just kind of deep open bag. And then you have an elasticized pocket right here. These are really nice. And then there's your brake, you guys. Here's your brake. And the, this brake is really easy to use. Flip it down. So it's like a flip-flop friendly brake. It's very easy. I obviously have no shoes on because we don't wear shoes in our house. Just like that. You guys, I'm so impressed. I haven't even used it yet and I'm loving it. All right, let's go ahead and talk now about the canopy. So the 7S, the original, and this one all have canopies. My original one had the twist-up poles. So you had to twist them and then screw them up when you got them up. This one here, it has a lock. So you're gonna push the lock forward. So they're telescoping poles. So you're gonna push the lock forward, lift it up, let go. Push it forward, lift up, let go. This one didn't lock, so let's try this one again. There it goes. All right. Now, your canopy comes in this bag. This bag does have like the equivalent of like stroller straps and you can hang it. And I'm gonna tell you, I will probably hang it on this side where the cooler is because I don't want it to be in the way when I'm walking on the other side. So it can hang just like this if you wanna take it with you. And this part remains the same. These parts here, if you come look, you get in here really nice and close. To put the canopy on, all you do is slip this portion here over top of the telescoping pole. So I'm gonna try to do this backwards even though I'm short. Let's see here. I can do it without even seeing what I'm doing. I might not be able to, we'll see. The assembly is super quick and easy, which is nice because sometimes you want the canopy on and sometimes you don't. You don't want it to take a long time to put on and off. And because we live in California and I tell people we have three seasons here, hot, hotter, and hell, it is nice to have shade. I am very fair and skin cancer is a real thing. I have had it. It is no joke. So we are very careful about the sun. Okay, so what you're gonna notice is that your canopy comes, I didn't know if it was gonna come rolled up or not. So it has two flaps, one on each side. So both sides of the canopy look exactly the same. There's not a right or a wrong way to put it on. Either side can go either way. And it looks like this when the back canopy is down. So that is really nice and shady. Now, if you wanted to have the canopy down, but you still wanted some airflow in, or you wanted the kids to have some privacy, but wanted to be able to look in on them or get more airflow, you can just unzip this. And it does unzip, it has zippers on both sides. So you have a zipper here and a zipper here. Same on the other side. 
So let's go ahead and roll up the wall of the canopy. Now I'll let you get a close look here so you have a, a toggle. So it comes under here, and then, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, there's another loop right here. So you're just gonna go ahead and loop it just like that. And you have three of them. One's in the center. There's one in the center right here. Just like this. So remember, this is our first time through doing any of this stuff, and it's all pretty easy. It's pretty intuitive. And they just kind of want to tuck the roll back behind so you don't see it. And that is a great looking wagon. That is a really good looking wagon. I'm gonna go ahead and push this around the room for just a minute. Let's see what I think. Oh, let's go ahead and talk. I forgot to show you guys here on the bottom of this. You have this nice little kind of hidden cubby right here. This is great for shoes, sandy towels, dirty clothes, anything you wanna put here that you want to be able to get like the dirt through or to have be able to breathe. I will tell you, we used to put jackets there. So in our other wagon, when it would be hot during the day but might cool off later, I'd go ahead and stick our jackets there. And if you don't want stuff to splash up in there, you can put like a blanket underneath it and stick the jackets on top. Okay, this is my first time, you guys. First time pushing this wagon. This is a bigger wagon than I'm used to, so let's see. Pushing it with my left hand, I'm right-handed. My right hand. Okay. Well, the true test, you guys, the true test is gonna to be tomorrow when we take it out with kids in it and snacks and drinks and all the things. But this is pretty amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and take the canopy off and then we'll go ahead and try to close it up because I haven't closed it up yet. And then we'll take it out to the car and we'll see if it fits in the back of my van. I'm not even sure if it'll fit yet, so we're gonna find out together. Come to this side. I'm gonna release this frame lock. That was really easy to push. I wasn't sure how hard that would be. And then you have this buckle right here in the center. You can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up. The wagon will start to come together. Okay. You can still roll it pretty good even with it folded up. So if you wanted to fold it, then roll it to your car. You could do so. You know, even though it's folded, let's try to put the cup holder on it. I wanna see how the cup holder works. It must be very user friendly. Okay. Yep, it appears that this piece just slides. And here I'm doing this backwards because I'm right handed, but it's okay. The slides there, and then this must just attach. Do you know what? I won't like that sticking out towards my body. We're gonna do it this way. Try to figure out how tight I want to make it. Okay, well, that was actually very easy. Now, I drink a lot of water, you guys, and my water bottles are very big. Let me go get my two favorite ones and see if they fit. Okay, here we go. Here's my Stanley cup. Okay, that fits there, but it is probably too heavy. I'm going to have to make this tighter. Let's see. I wouldn't stick this one here. I wouldn't trust it. It does fit, but it's too heavy. Okay, this is no Walla water bottle. 
it does not fit. This is the 24 ounce Stanley. Okay, this one does fit. Okay, so what I'll tell you guys is that while the cups fit, if they're super heavy, like the stainless steel ones, they're probably gonna be too heavy for this. But if you've got your Starbies, you've got a drink that while you're out in like a little plastic, you know, disposable container or just a regular water bottle. Let me get a regular water bottle. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so we have just a regular Dasani water bottle and that's fine and it's not making it fall over. So if you have a regular water bottle, again, you have disposable one. I think it's just the weight of the stainless steel with the ice and everything, it's just too much for this, but that's fine. Now we are actually using my phone to record with and I have an Apple 13 Pro Max. Um, this is my husband's Samsung S20. It's almost the same size, so we're gonna see if it fits. And it does, his fits perfectly. I'm gonna tell you, I think that the Pro might be slightly too big with a case on it because mine's just slightly wider and his fits like there's no extra room. But uh, if you have a regular iPhone, not the Max, like if you have a Pro but not the Max, it should fit fine because this phone is actually bigger than a regular Pro. So, all right. Well, that's a nice little extra. So I wanna go ahead and give you a quick look here at this nice little leatherette bar. It's really, really cute. Both sides look the same. It has the logo right there embossed on it. I don't think we got a good look at that earlier. We're gonna go ahead and walk this. Remember, this is folded up. We're gonna go ahead and walk it folded to my van and I'm gonna to try to stick it in there. We're gonna see how it goes. Hubby might have to take over. We will see. I have arthritis in my hands. So if I can do this with arthritis in my hands, and that's a pretty good sign. Very easy to push, fold it up. And my van is dirty, we use it. Hubby's gonna come around to this side so he can like look into the car while I do this. Let's see how it's gonna go. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, you know what? It's like slightly pushing against with the handle. I'm gonna try to lift the handle up and out of the way. Let's see. Oh, that's better. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna close though. We're about to find out. And it worked. My car is so dirty. Oh my gosh. We're gonna open it back up again. It was a dirty car. So it does fit in here with the handle down, but it was just like pushing it forward. So it was making it sit kind of like this. So to get it to sit upright, I just lifted the handle up. But like if my other kids are with us and they need to be back here, you know, we can always do this as well or just keep it folded all the way down. But I was able to lift this in here by myself. I got arthritis in both of my hands. I have psoriatic arthritis. So I was able to get it in here. It wasn't too much of a strain. Went in pretty easy. And it actually still has a little bit of room. I don't know if you can get down there and look again, ignore the dirty car, but there's still a little bit of space. So it doesn't take up all of it. This is a Chrysler Pacifica van. It's a 2019. Um, it's pretty comparable to the Honda Odyssey of the same year. We looked at both of the vans. I think the back end is the same size, but this is the Chrysler Pacifica. All right, so the next time you see us, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be at our destination point tomorrow in the heat with the girls sitting in the wagon. We're gonna look at how they fit. We're gonna watch them eating snacks, all the things. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome to day two where we're testing out the functionality of the 7S Plus with a seven and an eight year old. This is the wagon ride as we go in. We use this pocket right here for dry snacks. Held so many snacks. We had a lot of room left over. I could have put more in there. Down in the bottom, you're seeing a plastic sheet. That's what we put down for the girls to put their feet down on. You're seeing my Starbucks coffee there in the cup holder. Held my full Vente Starbucks great. We prefer to keep our pull handle in the up position and it worked great to hang the actual canopy bag there. And inside the canopy bag, what you're seeing is the snack tray. A little tip for all of you out there, the snack tray and the canopy both fit in here simultaneously beautifully. The cooler worked amazing, held a ton of food, kept everything cold. It was over 90 degrees today. I had two cooler packs on top, three on the bottom, four sandwiches, two fruit pouches, a giant water, two protein bars, six cheeses. I had apples, carrots, and other fruit slices. I had two juice boxes. And I loved using the phone holder to hold my sunglasses. Here I'm showing you the legroom that my children have, the seven and the eight year old when they're seated side by side. They actually prefer to sit together facing the same direction, but I wanted to show you how much leg room was left with a very tall seven-year-old and a very tall eight-year-old without the snack tray on. 
Here you're seeing the girls sit side by side again. This is their preferred way to sit unless they're having a snack or eating. If they're eating, they do like to sit opposite each other, but sit side by side otherwise. Now what we're looking at here is how much leg room the girls have when the snack tray is attached. They do have quite a bit of leg room. It is easier for the girls to climb in and out of the wagon without the snack tray attached, but that's an easy thing to put on and off. And here you're seeing how much height the seat back has when the girls sit back. They have a lot of support on their back when they're sitting back. The wagon sides are very tall. My girls are very tall when they're seated. Not a problem. And here is us walking down a hill on cobbled pavement. It pushed like a dream. It was easy to maneuver and control going downhill. Of all the terrain we pushed over, the uneven sloped grass posed the most difficulty, but still wasn't too bad. Here's a slight incline with some loose mulch that transitions to a paved walk. This was actually very easy to navigate as well. Now, because my girls are older, they really did enjoy the ability to get into the dry snack pouch and into the ice chest whenever they wanted. My girls loved the wagon. They wanted to ride in it instead of walking. We had a wonderful day with our 7S+.